Hello everyone. Welcome back to my video tutorial for spatial sequencing data set analysis. Today I'm going to show you how to analyze the VGM high definition spatial gene expression data. So the VGM HD spatial gene expression data are the latest technology from 10 times genomics. So this new technology can generate a whole transcriptome spatial gene expression data with single cell scale resolution. So I'm going to use the mouse brain FFP dataset for today's demonstration. You can scroll down to see the data. Here you can download the output files into your computer. I downloaded all the output files already. Let's have a look at the output files in my folder. You can see here are the files I downloaded from the 10 times genomics website. So if you are going to load the data from this folder, you need to unzip both bint and also bring spatial compressed data to get two folders named as bint outputs and also spatial. The spatial folder contains the image information for the data connection. Then in the bint outputs, you can see there are three folders. One is two micrometers. The second one is 8 micrometers and the third one is 16 micrometers. So the high definition technology actually connect the data and enable the area by 2 micrometers times 2 micrometers area. Then this area will be enabled by one barcode for mRNA sequencing. Then the 8 micrometers and the 16 micrometers data are actually combined from the 2 micrometers data. 10 times genomics recommends you use the 8 micrometers data to perform the data analysis. So now we have the data. We are going to load the 8 micrometers data into R. Then we can analyze the data using the thread package. So we can go to R. You can see now. Here is the link for download the data if you want to download the data for practice. So we are going to uh, load the 8 micrometers data use the load 10 times spatial function in the thread package. But if you want to load all the data, you can set the bin size argument as 2, 8, and 16. You will load all the data into the object. For today's demonstration, I'm going to load the 8 micrometers data and I set the bin size equals 8. So now we can load the data. Okay, you can see we loaded the 8 micrometers data. We can click the object and have a look at the data structure. You can see in this data, the C is spatial 8 micrometers. We have the metadata as origin ident, n count spatial 8 micrometers and n features spatial 8 micrometers. And also we load the image data into the threat object. You can see at the moment because we haven't do any analysis yet, so the reduction graphs are zero. Then you can see in this data we have 19,059 genes. Then in total we have nearly 400,000 cells. So I showed you the data structure. You can also use the assay function to see the assay in this object. If we run, you can see the default assay is the spatial 008 micrometers assay. I showed you the metadata already. We can have a look again. You can see the row names are the buckles. We have the origin items, n count spatial, 8 micrometers, and the n features spatial, 8 micrometers. So first we can use the wiring plot to have a look at the 
n features and n count, let's generate the wire limp node. You can see the next set is the wire limp node for n features. So in all the cells, the n features is below 2000, and the total count in each cell is below 3000. Because we have the image information, we can also look at the n count on the image data. We can use the spatial feature plot function. Let's generate the spatial feature plot for the n count spatial. Okay, you can see here is the image. The yellow color shows high n count. You can see cells in the hippocampus and the cells in cortex have a high n count. So now you can see we loaded the data has the image information. We can run the throughout workflow to connect the cells. First, we can normalize the data. Then find the variable features. Next, we can scale the data. So I showed you this data set has nearly 400,000 cells. It will take time to analyze the data using the standard throughout workflow. I tried it already and it works on my computer, but it takes at least half a day to render analysis. So for today's demonstration, we are going to use the sketch-based method because this method will be quicker to connect the cells. So first we can use the sketch data function from the thread package to sketch 50,000 cells and connect the cells from the sketch 50,000 cells. So in order to cover all the cell types, we will use the method Navigate score and we set the sketch the say as the sketch. Then we can take 50,000 cells from this data set. Let's sketch the data now. Okay, we sketch the 50,000 cells from the data. We can have a look at the threat object now. You can see in the says before we have the the C as a spatial 8 megameters. You can see we have the full cell numbers here. Now we generated a sketched C. We have the same number of genes, but we only have 50,000 cells. So now we can run the standard throughout the workflow to analyze the sketched data. So first we can set the default C as a sketch. Then we can run the standard workflow. First, we can find the variable features from the sketch the data. Then scale the data. After that, we run PCA. After PCA, we can find the neighbors. We are going to use the full PCAs from PC1 to PC50. So now we can find the clusters. I'm going to use the resolution as 0.5. The online tutorial uses the resolution 3. You can change the resolution to identify different cell clusters. Let's run the demonstration as resolution 0.5. So you can see with the resolution 0.5, we have 20 final clusters. Now we can run the U map. Because we want to use this data set as reference data to project the full data set. So during run U map function, we set the return model as true. So you can see we quickly finish the sketched assay data analysis. Now we can use the dimplot function to see the cell clusters. You can see in total we have 
20 cell canisters here. Huh? So next we can have a look at the for project metadata before we project the sketched C to the full cell data. Let's have a look at the metadata now. You can see for the sketched cell analysis, we have the leverage score for each cell. Then we have the throughout the cell canisters for the sketched C at a resolution 0.5. If we have a look at the throughout object, you can see now in the reduction status node, we have the PCA and the UMAP for the sketched C because here we only have 50 in the cells. So now we can use the sketched the C data as a reference data to project the cell canisters to full data. We will use the project data function from the thread package. Now we want to project the cell canisters to the full cells to see. It will be the spatial 8 micrometers. Then we set the full reduction as the full PCA. We are going to use the sketch the C sketch for the projection. And uh, we know the sketch the reduction is the PCA. The UMAP model from the sketch the C is the UMAP. And uh, we run the UMAP using PC1 to PC50. So here, the DIMMs will be PC1 to PC50. So the sketched data for the cell canisters are the SURA canisters. Now we name the cell canisters for the full data as SURA canisters full. So let's use the sketched data as reference data to project the full data set. Okay, we finished the data projection to get the cell canisters number for the full data set. Now we can have a look at the object again. You can see now in the reductions data slot, we have four list. So before we have the PC and the UMAP for the sketch the C. Now we have the full PC and the full UMAP for the full data set. So we projected the cell canisters to the full data set. Now we can set the default C as the full data set. So let's have a look at the metadata again. You can see now in the metadata, we have a column named as threat canisters full. So you can see we have a canister number for each cell. So now we can set the cell items as threat canister full. So we can use the items function to set the cell items as threat canister full for each cell. Let's set it. So you know now the default C is the full data set and we set the cell items. We can run the DIMP node to see the UMAP for the full data set. Let's run. You can see we generated the, the UMAP for the full data set. You can see the X axis and the Y axis were labeled as the full UMAP 1 and the full UMAP 2. So we have the cell numbers for each cell for the full data set. Now we can run the spatial DIMP node function to see the cell canisters on the brain tissue. So you can see on the brain tissue image, we have all the cell canisters. In total, we have 20 here. And the cell canisters are indicated by different color. You can clearly see, for example, canister 13, 16 are the cells in the hippocampus, and also canister 7 are the cells from meningi tissue. If you want, you can just select some cell canisters to make a new spatial DM per node. For example, we can use the canister 7, 13, and 16 for the demonstration. We can select these three cell canisters. 
Then we run the spatial dim plot again. Okay, you can see we generated uh, the plot to see the location of the individual cell clusters. Let's zoom in to see the cell clusters. You can see it connects the 13 and the 16. They are the cells from the hippocampus. And the cluster 7 are the cells from the meningi tissue. So now we cluster the cells for the full data set. And uh, you can see the cell clusters on the brain tissue. So we can save the data as R data. We can save it in the Wisdom HD folder and then name it as the Wisdom HD R data. Let's save it. Okay, we saved the data as R data. I'm going to do one more demonstration. For example, we can use the spatial feature plot function to look at the C expression. I'm going to use the HPCA gene as an example to see its expression. It should be the paper company neurons. Let's run. You can see we generated the image to show the HPCA expression. You can see it is highly expressed in the C1 and the C3 region in the neurons in hippocampus. So I'm going to stop from here for today's demonstration. We saved the data. Next time we can load the data again to do other analysis. So I hope to see you in my next video tutorial.